Hello, movie patient, and welcome to Film Therapy. I am Brienne, also known as Miss Movies, and I am your film therapist. I'm not a real therapist, <laughs> but I play one on the internet. And <laughs> this show only works with a patient, and that patient today is Miss Alicia Malone. I'm in need of some therapy today, Brienne, so uh, yeah, please help me through this. I think we're all in need of some therapy today, specifically. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, it's been an interesting evening and yep. <laughs> beginning of today. I know, but this this show felt important to do because even though sometimes when ha things happen like this, you think, well, I feel so silly talking about movies. The fact that we're talking about movies as a source of escape and inspiration and to help you through dark times, I think it's perfect for today. Exactly. It is perfect for today. Um, so for those of you that are watching this on a replay a different day, we're, we're discussing, <laughs> um, our undertones are about the recent election. Yes. And um, yeah, and our and our general feelings about everything that's happening in the United States of America at this point. Mm -hmm. at this current time and so hopefully some of our films that we discussed today will kind of take us out of that and take us to another place but i do want to say for those that are experiencing some sort of need right now i'm not a therapist alicia is not a therapist so please call your doctor or go yeah. to the emergency room or find a Check hotline out. that you can have someone to talk to absolutely so this is a storytelling show called Film Therapy. I ask each patient three questions. The three questions are always the same. What's a movie that inspires you? What is a film or a scene from a film that triggers a memory? Perhaps it's painful or perhaps it's a happy memory. And what is a movie that gets you through difficult times? So Alicia, before we get started, why don't you tell the audience, the, uh, the people that are in the waiting room right now, why don't you <laughs> tell them about yourself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, waiting in the waiting room. I'm Alicia Malone. I guess you would describe my job as a film reporter or a film correspondent. Basically, I get to watch a lot of movies, talk about movies on various shows, and do a lot of interviews with movie stars. Uh, you might have seen me on previous shows that I was on, like AMC Movie Talk or Schmoes No. Uh, currently, I am on Screen Junkies News, which is where I am right now on the set of that. Um, also Fandango, I have my own show, Fandango Indie Movie Guide, because indie movies are my jam. And then I just started a new job with Turner Classic Movies and Criterion Collection on their streaming service called Filmstruck, where I do hosted intros for the movies, which is a dream job because I get to talk about really obscure foreign films and classic and art house and cult movies. Uh, so I love it. I mean, yeah, Brianne is like the, the, it's the ultimate job, a job that I never thought I would ever have as a kid. And I um, feel like I'm living in a dream half the time. And it's the perfect fit for you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who else could do that job. Because it's <laughs> like, oh, that works so perfectly. Now for it. that, is that a service like, could I find that on my Apple TV and then like pay a subscription for it? Is that how that works? Yeah, that's right. If you go to filmstruck.com, you can actually get a two week free trial to try it out. But you can watch it on your Apple TV, I think on your Amazon Fire Stick or through your computer anyway. And they have just a huge library of the best of the best films from all over the world and from different times, um, you know, classic movies plus some more recent films as well. And it's really curated very well. So I feel like it's not daunting if you haven't got into foreign films, say, and, and you would love to, you'd love to know more about Kurosawa. It's right there and it, it's very easy to access and easy to digest. I love it. I'm definitely <laughs> going to check that out because when yeah, it do. came out, I was like, oh, I need to do this. Yeah, this it's is, great. It's like film important. school, film film school in an app, I call it. Nice. And that's what I need because I definitely, <laughs> like, I, I love films and I do know a little bit about films, but I need to learn more. And that's why I like to talk about movies because I feel like once I talk about them with people, then I learn more about them every time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I still, I'm still learning. I've got a lot more to learn as well. That's what that's makes it exciting, you know? Exactly. Well, let's get into our first question, which is Alicia, I would love you to tell me what is a movie that inspires you? Okay. Well, I've, I've told people many times this, but it's rare that I cry in a movie because 
I don't know. I think I'm always very aware of the fact that it's it's been made by someone, by a director, by a screenwriter. These are actors. So it's hard for me to emotionally invest sometimes. I, I watch and I go, oh, that's sad. Oh, oh, that's happy. But rarely do I have that physical experience of crying. Documentaries are a different thing because it's a true story. But one movie that always makes me cry tears of happiness is It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. And it may be a cliched answer, but it's a film that I watch without fail every year at Christmas time. And I go to a movie theater by myself. And Christmas time for me is not always the best time. I am far away from my family. You see everyone here going off to their various families, and you can feel very alone at Christmas. Uh, and I think that's why Christmas makes for such an interesting movie in general. And that movie makes me feel less alone and it makes me feel very inspired because the moment that he turns things around, um, and I know I used the gif of Jimmy Stewart as George Bailey in the snow, so depressed last night when they were I, calling I the election. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the moment after that where he, where he saves himself and he is running through the town and saying hello, saying Merry Christmas, everything. And he says, Merry Christmas, movie house. And that I start, I get such an overwhelming feel of joy. It starts to come out of my eyes <laughs> every time by myself uh, watching that because I think, A, he's talking about like a movie house, which is something that I love. B, just the the inspiration for life that he has, again, uh, after being in the darkest moments, how he turned that around. I think that's really important. And also at the very end, that no man is a failure who has friends, that makes me cry because, again, when I'm far away from my family in America and they're all in Australia and I feel like I have no one, that reminds me that I have really good friends and sometimes friends are just as good as family or they can feel like family as well. So that movie never fails to inspire me. When you came out here, what was that like? Because in my mind, when someone comes to Los <laughs> Angeles, my thought is like, maybe they have enough money to like rent for two months. Yeah. Are they going to eat? Like what <gasps> happens? Did you have a job lined up? How does nope. that work? I had nothing. I had no plans. I had no savings. I look back now and I think, that was really ballsy of me and I don't know where I had the confidence to do that because I didn't know anyone here at all. Uh, but I think growing up loving movies and escaping to movies and the idea of a fresh start is really appealing to me and the idea of a makeover. And then I think we've seen that kind of that kind of thing in movies plenty of times before. You pack your bags, you pack your little suitcase and off you go to an, a new land to start again, uh, get off the bus and you're like ah oh, Hollywood I'm here so that's how I imagined it I thought you know I'm gonna take my suitcases and move over there and and I had this real feeling that it would be like a movie where I step off the plane and suddenly my world is different it's a different color grading I'm a different person it all starts afresh and I was so surprised at how when you get off the plane I was like oh it, it just feels like I just got off the plane and I've just been on a plane for 10 hours and, and life is continuing and this is just life. Um, and especially because Australia and LA, Sydney and LA, I should say, are quite similar. Uh, it didn't feel that different. So I was waiting for it to feel like I'm in America now and this is completely different from Australia because everyone speaks English and there's a lot of familiar things around. It's only the small differences that you still joke about aluminium, aluminium, you know, all that stuff, uh, mainly things we say, but the culture is so similar. But it it was a scary time, I think, when it finally dawned on me what I had done. Um, the money was, was a big thing because I didn't plan for it. I didn't even think about it. My mum was saying, how are you going to pay the rent? And I was like, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I was lucky that I started to get work pretty quickly when I moved over, but um, movies definitely helped me through that time. And, and I spoke about that in my video on my YouTube about Filmstruck, that that's when I started watching Turner Classic Movies. And having classic movies on in the background, because I grew up watching them, felt like home. It felt like I was not that far away from home. Um, and it reminded me of why I moved to Hollywood because when I was watching classic movies when I was young, that's what made me think Hollywood, like Hollywood is the glamorous center of the world and I want to go there. And I always loved Marilyn Monroe when I was young. Um, I love the idea of the reinvention 
Um, so she moved to Hollywood and she unfortunately had a sad ending. But for a while there, she was this, she became this icon. Um, so movies really got me through that time. And, and during my downtime, when I didn't have much money to spend, I would just go to the theater and go to the arc light, you know, and watch whatever was playing. Um, and luckily I started making friends pretty quickly and making work pretty quickly. But yeah, I look back and I go, how did I do that? I'm not right. so sure. What was your first job? Yeah, my first job. So luckily, because I've been working in Australia for so long in the industry, I started working in television straight out of school. I didn't go to college. Uh, so I'm not a college educated person, which they always talk about as being uneducated. But I always felt like I would learn better on the job just personally rather than in a classroom. So I got a job at a TV station. And because of that, because I started when I was 18, a lot of the people that I started working with at that point who were like me, photocopying scripts, getting coffee for people, just being production assistants, slowly went up and up and up and up and up. So then by the time I left uh, Australia, I knew all the heads of all the networks in terms of all the, the producers and the decision makers. And I knew all the publicists from all the studios in Australia from working with them doing interviews and junkets and red carpets in Australia. So I felt like I had a good base already that I could immediately, I, I had meetings before I left Australia saying, I'm going to move to LA. They all had people that they were using in LA, but I was like, just keep me in mind. When I moved to LA, just reminding you, email, email, I'm in LA if you ever need anything. And then my first job, I think it was covering the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, so it was pretty soon after I moved over in January for an Australian network who their person couldn't do that day. Oh. So that's all I needed was that in. Um, and then I was pretty lucky in that one of the girls who worked for the station that I used to work for in Australia, she decided she was in LA and she decided she wanted to move back to Australia. She'd had enough. And instead of having to see out her contract, she was excited that I was here and she could say, you know, I, I really want to go back to Australia, but you got Alicia. So, and you guys know Alicia, you worked with her. So uh, there you go. And it made it easy for her to go back to Australia and easy for me to just slot right in there. So I was very lucky in that respect. That's really exciting. So you weren't coming from like a, a you know, new actress, let's say, like no. ground level, like I'm going to Hollywood, I'm going to yeah. it. Like it's a, a lit, you had a little bit more of a exactly. Up, so that's yeah. nice. That's yeah, nice. I had, I had a lot of experience behind me at that stage, what, 11 years of working in television. So I really felt when I left Australia, there was no more I could do in Australia. I could just move from other to other networks, but I'd kind of gotten as high as I possibly could talking movies in Australia specifically. So I I wanted to change and then I was yeah, there. That gave me, I guess, more confidence to move over because I had worked in the industry for so long and I had that basis. It would have been really difficult to move over here and start from scratch and have never done this role before but you know what it's like you you meet people you talk to people you do things like this I mean your podcast is great you meet people and you make connections uh, I've never been a networker but just making friends and then people recommend you for other things they think of you and it, it just right. starts to build and happen plus this is great practice anytime you do a podcast you know for me I get better every time I do it something like this it helps exactly it does yeah. help and then i'm just shocked that people like actually want to talk on my shows and come on and i'm like all right <laughs> awesome yeah of course <laughs> no no and you have such a, a great way of putting people at ease and make it a conversation and not like an interview so um yeah i'm, I'm like as soon as you said i was like yes i'm, I'm there just got to figure out with the schedule but i wanted to be doing this show for sure Oh, thank you. I'm so flattered. <laughs> Let's get to our second question. Um, yes. Just in case, because I know um, for those that don't know, Alicia is at Screen Junkies right now and mm -hmm. may be called out pretty much at any moment. So I yeah. want to make sure we get everything in that we can in this amount of time. Um, <laughs> so our second question is, what is a film or a scene from a film that triggers a memory for you? Perhaps it's painful or perhaps it is happy. I'm going to go with a happy one. Uh, speaking of classic films, a movie that I grew up watching time and time again is Gentlemen Fur Blondes. 
with Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe because I was obsessed with her and Jane Russell. And the scene that always triggers a memory for me when I watch it again is the very beginning of that movie with Jane and Marilyn coming out and doing We're Just Two Little Girls from Little Rock. And they have a dance to it and they do a little song to it. And me and my sister Yvette, who's a couple of years older than me, She's actually the one that introduced me a lot to indie films because she was always going to see these really bizarre movies in cinema and that started my love. But she also loved Marilyn too. So we spent a long time, and this was, of course, with VHS, rewinding, pausing, playing, rewinding to learn that dance. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to it. fight over who was Marilyn and who was Jane, although they're both great, but we both wanted to be Marilyn. She ended up winning that, so she was Marilyn, I was Jane, but Jane's super sassy and I love her. So we learnt the whole dance. Of course, you have to kind of learn it backwards watching them and trying to do it, and then we finally nailed it and we would just do it over and over again and we'd make my other sister, Natalie, sit down and watch us do it <laughs> And she was like, oh, I'm so bored by this. We're like, no, we got it, we got it. And so every time I see Gentlemen Fur Blondes, that opening scene, it takes me back to it and I, I can still kind of do it along with them and uh, I love it. So that's definitely a very happy memory. So do you have two sisters? <laughs> yeah, two older sisters and actually I have a younger half-sister as well. Um, yeah, my two older sisters One's in Sydney and one's in Melbourne and then my half-sister's in Brisbane in Australia. All over. All over. Yeah, and then I'm out here doing my thing. So the one that got to watch you, did she just not want to be in <laughs> the thing or no, how did that she work? Did not, she did not <laughs> want to be in the performance at all. There were so many times when me and Yvette would uh, have performances and we would make our own little programs um, and force, you know, my sister and, and my mum to sit down and watch us. And yeah, my older sister, Natalie, she was much more into computers and uh, com computer games, video games. And so I would have to drag her away from playing video games. We're like, watch us do our dance. She's like, no, nah, this is not interesting. She didn't want to be involved at all. <laughs> this reminds me of growing up. I would do some similar stuff, maybe not make programs, but I definitely <laughs> like when I wasn't doing the performance, like for my parents, I would probably be doing like making a restaurant and doing menus. <laughs> and I'm sure lots yeah. of kids do that. Or like as a babysitter, like if I wanted to have the kids watch a movie, cause that's an <laughs> easy thing. I would like make up tickets and then we'd like That's have good. them buy the popcorn and then we would watch <laughs> Star Wars or whatever. You know? That's so cool. Yeah, I remember me and Yvette, we loved Blue Hawaii the Elvis movie mm -hmm. and we decided we want to be we wanted to pretend that we went to Hawaii so one summer we had this whole thing we made everyone be part of it again my sister didn't want to be part of it Natalie so we made her she was like just the weird girl on the computer at the hotel but we made credit cards and we were pretending that we were super like supermodels that were having a holiday in Hawaii and Elvis was somewhere there and so we took over our kitchen, made it the restaurant and did the whole thing. And, and then we didn't have a, a pool or a ocean, obviously. So we had the sprinklers and then we'd go through the sprinklers pretending to be swimming. <laughs> it's funny the things you do when you're young. <laughs> I know. You're like, actually, I was 24 when I was young. Yeah, it's last <laughs> week. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is something that I watched actually recently. I've seen it before and then I mm -hmm. revisited it. And when I saw it the first time, I was probably a teenager. And this was, um, I had read Marilyn Monroe's um, biography that was written by her sister, mm. which is actually a really interesting biography. I read that maybe my sophomore year of high school because we had to read a biography. And then um, I watched a lot of her films, which I had already seen a lot. And I watched Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And as a high schooler, I really liked Marilyn Monroe's character. But then as yeah. an adult, I was like, oh, I really like Jane Russell, like yes. a lot. I love the, yeah, <laughs> Jane Russell, uh, her big song with all the athletes, with the men, yes. you know. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. At first I wanted to be like Lorelai, you know, the sweet little innocent, um, you know, not not very smart, but she she's conniving when she wants to be. But then as I grow older, yeah, the sassy, just tell it like it is type is more my fave, yeah. I swear there's a man in that that like does a handstand for like a few Yes. Minutes. And I'm like, that does. is impressive. 
Yeah, I remember always watch because I've seen the film so many times. When you start watching all the extras and noticing them doing weird things, right. yeah, I definitely noticed that guy. Did you do any other like learn any other routines from other films? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Grease tried to learn that the hand jive, yeah. um, and obscure one, but the start of Bring It On. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where she was having a dream. I mean, that was later on uh, when I was a little bit older. But, uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> learnt that one. And um, lots of music videos. So lots of, like, Janet Jackson trying to do Rhythm Nation, oh. all that stuff back when the music video was a big thing. Oh, man. I'm trying to think, like, did I do any of those? Did I learn any yeah. of those? I can't remember. I remember there was a time when I was on the dance team and – there was a girl that wasn't on the dance team, but knew like all of our routines. And I was like, <laughs> how do you know all of our routines? And she's like, well, my dad would, would videotape them. And then I'd learn them. I mean, she was on it the next year, but I was like, that is so strange. Like, yeah. well, I do that. And then, uh, you know, not that long ago, I let the single ladies dance. Ooh, that was just for me. I, you know? see that. I tend to crack it out at parties, you know, mm -hmm. when people or just looking alarmed at me. What is she doing? Me. Karaoke. karaoke yeah the single ladies i see yeah. you do uh, I, on your instagram what is it um <gasps> salt and pepper mix -a -lot. oh right. so mix a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes i uh my karaoke go-to jams uh so mix a lot i like big butts and again that la and um ice ice baby as well vanilla ice and shoot salt and pepper any kind of rap i love for karaoke because i can't sing at all but I love yeah. 90s rap. Yeah, if you it's do great. something that has mainly talking, yeah. you're pretty good. You're pretty good. I can do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into our final question. Our final question is, what is a film that, um, that helps you through difficult times? Yeah, um, you know, like today, one like film, today, yeah, like him. today, like today. <laughs> and, you know, I... I when I speak about my childhood, I always talk about it in very uh, rosy terms, like the performances, watching classic movies, but definitely had some really, really tough times when I was young. Um, and I won't go into that because there's lots of people involved, but mm -hmm. one film that I remember really felt like it changed my life when I saw, and I saw it in theatres, and it was when, towards the end of uh, when I was a teenager, uh, Amelie. Aww. The French movie Amelie and my sister Yvette took me to see that in uh, in a theatre in Sydney. I was still in Canberra where I grew up and I really wanted to escape Canberra and I was dreaming of moving to Sydney so that was my first big move. And so I went to visit my sister Yvette uh, in Sydney as an 18 year old or just about to turn 18 and I saw Amelie with her and I felt like Amelie looks in the theatre when she's watching a movie, the big eyes staring up at the screen. I hadn't really seen anything like it. I know that a lot of people are quick to say that it's it's very quirky um, and doesn't have much substance to it, but I love this movie so much. It makes me happy. I put it on over and over again. It's to the point where when I was living with Maud Garrett, when she would walk in and see Amelie was on my TV, my bedroom, she'd be like, what's wrong? What's going on? Because she knew that that was always my pick me up movie and it's probably a movie I'm going to watch tonight. Uh, but it makes me so happy. It's really charming, sweet. Uh, it's got that beautiful love story. I also like how it's got that whole through line, which is something I had to learn and something I'm still learning about uh, looking after yourself and loving yourself. And uh, there's the line where she's talking to the guy with who with the broken bones uh, who's painting the portrait and he paints the same portrait every year. And she's talking about saving other people and how she wanted to help other people. And he was like, but what about you? Who's going to save you, you know? And I, I love that, that idea. And Audrey Tattoo is just so gorgeous. I, I love Amelie. And it's one that I need to go back to again. Um, one of my favorites is the gnome that she said. Yeah. The so great. Oh, That's such a good so idea. Cute. And her dad keeps getting the postcards and he's so confused about why his 
gnome is traveling around the world but and that I like how she does these small little things to kind of change someone's life or, or make them think differently about their everyday humdrum life one of my favorite moments is when the guy comes into the cafe to meet her and she can't bring herself to go up to him and talk to him and reveal to him that that's her and as he leaves, she literally melts into a puddle on the ground. I'm like, I think we've all felt like that before. Like, oh, puddle. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now there is one part that I don't remember well. Maybe you can help me. I feel like she swaps out some guy's shoes to make them smaller. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's the guy that runs the vegetable stand who is really mean and he's very mean to his assistant uh he makes fun of him all the time and amelie sees this and she decides she's going to teach him a lesson so she breaks into his apartment and then she just makes small changes to all his things just to drive him crazy yes. she sets his alarm clock early um she puts she replaces toothpaste with something and some kind of cream um and then she as you should change the doorknobs from one side to the other so he's really confused when he goes yeah. to go down and it's a twist and then yeah she makes his shoes smaller and um i think his slippers as well so that he's just like i think he makes his slippers smaller and then she does she changes his laces and he's just so confused about what's going on and i love that that he's just so discombobulated about everything that's happened that he ends up just letting his assistant take over and it's a much nicer happier place <laughs> ah, i couldn't remember what the end of it was like why was yeah that and then yes that's hilarious um, <laughs> she's like the ultimate gaslighter in that like I know. scenario she's perfect and uh, there's another scene which is great where she takes the hold of the blind guy who's walking across the road and then she picks him up she walks with him and she's explaining everything that's going on the little tiny little details and then after she leaves his whole world brightens because he can feels like he can see what's going on and that i think that's really sweet and then i love at the end she ends up saving herself and then she ends up um finding love of her life and so it's all very very happy and that's why it leaves me in such a great mood at the end ah uh, i'm gonna i need to watch it again and I, we own it so i gotta just find where it is. <laughs> yeah. it's one of those watch where it. did i put that because i know i have it <laughs> watch it again and then let me know what you think of it when you watch it again <laughs> Definitely. thank you so much alicia for being on this session of film therapy where can the other patients find you i already feel better after my trip to this therapist uh you can find me on twitter at alicia malone i'm on instagram as well alicia malone you can look up youtube uh, movies are my jam is my username and uh where else so just alicia malone.com I'm all over. You, you'll see yes. me pop up. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like getting Alicia Malone or Malone. Oh, Malone, Malone Mail. Yes. Yeah. I've got a little newsletter that I try to do every week. Sometimes I get crazy busy and I don't have a chance. But Malone Mail, it's if you go to AliciaMalone.com, you can see how to subscribe. But I just try and put out my indie recommendations for the week, uh, a classic recommendation, a little letter about what I've been up to and uh, how to support women in film too. Yes. And right now, Girls on Film has a great series of Not Okay. That is something that everyone should be checking out. Yes. And that is that on your channel or is that on HitFix? That is actually, I just put all three videos on my YouTube channel. So if you go to Movies on My Jam, please watch. It's called Girls on Film, a hashtag Not Okay. And it's some very brave women sharing their personal stories about sexism, sex abuse, sexual harassment, um, and hoping that by talking about it, we can start to change the world a little bit, have a conversation about it and have less stigma and then have pe more people aware of it. Yes. It's Hopefully. Yeah. This is very important. <laughs> And um, I subscribe because I recently realized I was not subscribed to your channel and then I subscribed. Hey, so I, write, I write it that wrong. I was like, wow, how, how did that happen? So I apologize. But anyways, no, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Miss Movies. Um, thank you for joining us today. I will see you next time on our next session of film therapy. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and we're out.